Xiaomi are well known for their mobile phones. This right here is their first notebook, the Mi Notebook Air 12.5 inch version. Now there is a larger 13.3 inch version, which I will cover in a later date in another review. This here is the fanless model that is powered by a Core M3. It has four gigabytes of RAM, a 128 gigabyte SSD, and weighs only 1.07 kilos. It's very light, has a premium build, which I will show you shortly. So this is going to be an in-depth review. Please feel free to skip ahead to the parts with the included times here. Two sections of the review that will interest you the most. So the first thing you'll notice is that there's no logo on the top. And the reason being that Xiaomi wants you to customize it. And they also want to sell you vinyls and stickers to put on the top to customize it to your own liking. The Mi Notebook has a very nice alloy design. You're able to open it with just one hand. And here you'll notice that the screen is very reflective under these conditions because it is covered in glass. Now it's fully laminated, has a 1080p screen, which has a maximum brightness of 300 lumens of brightness. Port wise, we have an HDMI port on the left side and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack with microphone support. On the right side, a status LED type C port for charging data and also display out and a full size USB 3 port. On the front, there are dual microphones and a 1.3 megapixel camera. It has a large synaptics touchpad which supports gestures, hardware left and right mouse buttons. The surface is smooth and I find it is very good to use. It is accurate, it doesn't skip at all, and one of the better trackpads that I have used on a notebook. The keyboard has spacious layout, good separation of the keys, 1.5 millimeters of travel. I find it's comfortable to type on. It has only one level of backlight there. So it's either on or off, unfortunately, which is a shame. I would like to have seen some different levels there because at nighttime use, it can be a little too bright, the keyboard. And finally, on the rear, we have two downwards firing AKG speakers, rubber feet there, and some torque screws holding in the rear alloy plate. Now, this can be removed, and you can change the internal two SSDs inside there. It comes with one pre-installed, and there is a spare slot to install an additional one a PCIe SSD. Have a look at the playlist. I do have a video if you're interested on how to open it and how to replace the SSDs. So weighing only 1.07 kilos, this thing is really light. Easy to slip in your backpack and a bag and carry it. Now how's the typing experience on the keyboard? Now straight out of the box when I did my unboxing, that was my first impressions. I said that, you know, it was kind of average. I wasn't really that happy with it, but I'm happy to report that I'm completely wrong. I got that wrong. The typing experience on this is really good. Now there's, there's no bounce to it. It's a very nice tactile feedback to it. The travel is 1.2 millimeters. I find the way they're spaced out and the layout, once I adjusted from my usual 10.6 inch Cube i7 book keyboard, to this one, I'm flying now with typing, and it is really good. It is up there with the Surface Pro type covers, up there with other keyboards. I do find it is really good considering the price range of this, as well as the trackpad. Now, it's a proper brand. It's a Synaptics trackpad. It has a very smooth, nice feel to it, and I find that it's good, very usable, very accurate. It doesn't skip. All I needed to do was just tweak the sensitivity a little bit so I can move from one side of the screen to the other a little faster, and I am finding it is again up there with some of the better trackpads on notebooks. Now the backlit keys are individually lit and you'll see that after about 12 seconds they will automatically turn off and the brightness cannot be controlled. It's a shame that Xiaomi did not include various different levels there for nighttime use. The screen at the moment is set to 0% and I find that to be quite good. On camera here it looks a little bit brighter due to my camera settings. So what about flex in the design and the keyboard here? So if I push down relatively hard, I'm pushing actually quite hard. You can see there's a bit of flex. And the lid. Again, pressing down quite hard, quite firm there. Some flex there. But overall, I find it's quite good. So the build quality overall is excellent. It has a premium feel to it, but I do have this one minor complaint, and that is the plastic along the top here that has a bit of a poor paint job, really. If you look here, you can see a bit of a run along there. So the finish isn't up to the standard of the rest of the notebook. Now you're probably thinking, why is this plastic here? And that's for obvious reasons for the wireless antennas for their range and performance. 
Now the two downward firing speakers, the AKG ones that Xiaomi put in here sound really good. It offers what I would say one of the better speakers you'll hear on a notebook of this size. Premiums, this has a 23 megapixel Sony 4x3 sensor in there and it has um, auto focused. <laughs> Also the 3.5mm headphone jack which is located at the front there, that sounds really good, offers loud sound. So here is a sample of the front facing 1.3 megapixel camera. Can record up to 720p video, it has dual microphones left and right. And for Skype and video apps, I think it's okay, you can see it's quite grainy, that is because it's a sunset conditions here at the moment. So the lighting isn't good, but in bright light, sunlight, it comes out quite clear. And I find it to be acceptable. So you might be thinking it's only got one USB 3 port on there. Well, it has a secondary port because the Type-C is not only just charging, it can do video output and also data. So right here I can access a USB flash drive and all you need is just an adapter for that. You're also able to use other Type-C adapters like this one here that will allow you to charge and have USB ports all at the same time. Other adapters that allow you to have HDMI out, this one here example, and you can also try to charge it, well I did at least, with an external battery pack, but it seems that 5 volts, 2 amps just isn't enough. Now I know there are fast chargers out there that output 12 volts, but they only normally output about 1.5 amps, which isn't sufficient enough to be able to charge that. So you can rule out external battery packs. Alright, so I have just moved over to a video capture card that is just outputting the display from the HDMI port straight into my PC and recording that. This is to give you an idea of the performance, how things perform on the Mi Notebook Air with its Core M3. So I'm just going to quickly go into System. Now because I purchased, purchased my unit very early, straight out of China, in Chinese, I had to actually do a clean install of Windows 10. So things might differ here a little compared to later versions that come with English pre-installed. So we have 4 gigabytes of RAM, 64-bit operating system. Now that RAM is running at 1866 megahertz. That's its maximum speed for the Core M dual channel. Now under the device manager, I'll just quickly show you a couple of things. So the disk drive is a Samsung SATA 3 unit, 128 gigabytes. You get approximately, you get over 100 gigabytes free on first boot. If I move down here to the network adapter, it is Intel dual band wireless AC and that performs excellent, really good speeds. And the SSD speeds, benchmarked that. That is not bad for a SATA 3 drive, they're, they're good scores. Now the wireless speeds that I managed to get. Okay, so that is a really good speed there for a 4G connection. This is in fact the fastest speed I have ever got in all the benchmarks I have run on tablets and notebooks. And many PCs, so really good performance. Here's the Ice Storm Extreme score. Now, if you compare that to a gaming desktop, that's really bad, but for a fanless 4.5 watt CPU, that's not a bad score. Neither is this one here, Cloudgate. And then finally, Ice Storm 1.3. And Geekbench Browser, this isn't a bad score again for the chipset. Similar scores to what you'd get on the Surface Pro 4 M3. So benchmarks are one thing. What about performance in real life use? So I find it to be quick and snappy. Opens things up really quick thanks to the SSD. And it feels like one of the older um, Core i5s. You only really notice the Core M start to slow down when you really push it with multitasking. So if you're running Chrome and you just run a heap of tabs. And if you decide to start just opening up lots of things, or if you want to edit video, you can do some minor editing in 1080p. I mean, 1080p is fine. And if you use an editor like PowerDirector 14 that supports QuickSync, then it's not going to be painfully slow encoding your videos. And if you're trying to do, if you use Adobe Premiere 4K video editing, forget about it. Keep that kind of stuff to your desktop. But otherwise here, if I go and various tabs open, I'm just going to quickly load up uh, whatever site comes to my head. So that'll just be Amazon. I'm not an Amazon affiliate, by the way. So just bring that up, Amazon. It's quick and snappy. I've, I, I find it to be performing really good. Like I've never loaded that before and that just pops up. I think a lot of people will be happy with it and, and it boots up really quick. The boot time is, is only literally like about 10 seconds to go from cold boot straight into desktop. Shutdown as well is very quick. So the performance wise, I have no complaints. This is working really well. It is snappy and 
yeah, eight gigabytes would have been nice of RAM. Um, four should be sufficient for most people. I know a lot of people will see that as a deal breaker, and that's probably when you want to go and get the 13.3 inch version with its more powerful chipset, more powerful dedicated graphics, of course, and eight gigabytes of RAM. Now, when it comes to battery life, Show Me claimed that you can get 11.5 hours. I've not been able to achieve that. I'm not sure what conditions they used. I imagine it was flight mode enabled, looping video at 0% brightness. So that's unrealistic usage. Now, realistic usage, bit of multitasking, some YouTube, five or six tabs open in Edge, transferring files to a USB pen drive, some movie watching. I get around six hours, six and a half. Now, right now, my full run time, the battery bar is giving me is around six hours, 40 minutes. That's my current use. You can see at the moment the elapsed time since 91% when I'm now at 62 so I've got almost three hours so it isn't going too bad now Core M3s have always had disappointing battery life for me personally I found the Surface Pro 4 M3 that I had to have nowhere near the claimed figures as well there now the good thing is that charge times you can charge this up to 50% and literally about 35 minutes it's it is very quick fully charged in about 90 minutes so not bad, at least there's a plus side there to that. Now if you're going to be watching movies, just watching movies, you could put the brightness down a little bit, then you could probably squeeze out about 8 hours, maybe even 9 if you turn on flight mode there too. So for movie watching, not bad, but still nowhere near Xiaomi's 11.5 hours. So the question is, can it game? Well, yes, you can play a few games on the side, but only lighter games. But titles, popular titles like League of Legends are fully playable and the native full screen so that's 1080p and other titles you're going to have to lower the resolution lower the settings right down as well to get playable frame rates here's a quick sample of some gaming So to wrap up the review, I think this is an excellent unit, very good build on it, I do like the keyboard, the more and more I started to use this keyboard, the more I liked it, it is actually quite good to type on. First impressions weren't that great, but it has grown on me and I'm sure it will grow on you. The touchpad is good as well, one of the better ones I have seen on a notebook in recent times. A very nice 1080p screen, very bright, very sharp, and the performance is good for a Core M, not bad at all. And that comes to my cons. Would have been nice if they had actually put a touch screen on there and also a micro SD card slot at least and an additional USB 3 port on the left hand side. But anyway, the main con is the battery life. I found it to be quite disappointing. Now, Xiaomi's claim was an 11 and a half hours. I never believed those over exaggerated manufacturers claims, but it falls short by a long shot there. It isn't as good as it should be. But at least you can say it charges quite quickly though. 50% battery and only around half an hour isn't bad at all. Thank you so much for watching this review. If you did like it, why not think about subscribing? I'll have more up and coming and I hope to see you back in the channel soon.